In mathematics, we have elements and operations with elements. For example, we have numbers that we can add, subtract, or multiply. We have shapes that we can rotate, stretch, and reflect. That is, we can apply different operations to our elements. And the standard way to study operations is to describe what they do to elements. I mean, it does not make sense to say rotate without supplying an object that we want to rotate. We can't say add without supplying the number. We treat elements as a central notion, while operations are secondary and depend on elements. The subject of category theory, however, attempts something strange. It wants to make operations central and, in a way, forget about the elements. In this video, I describe a particular instance of categorical thinking. Mathematicians define collections of elements as sets and operations between sets are defined using functions. By the way, category theory loves arrows, so you should love them too. So, sets are primary and functions are secondary, according to traditional logic. It should mean that we can define functions as sets. A function from set A to B is just a subset of the Cartesian product of sets. Cartesian product contains all possible pairs of elements from A and B. So, any conceivable function is simply a particular collection of these pairs. There is a trick, however. We must specify that any element from A is sent to exactly one element of B by our function f. That is, this subset cannot contain both A, B and a C, where B and C are different. That is why this is not a graph of a function, but this one is. Functions can have various additional properties. The two most important ones are injectivity and surjectivity. Injectivity is when two different elements from the domain are not allowed to arrive at the same element in the codomain. Surjection requires that every element from the codomain is sent to from at least one element in the domain. When a function is both a surjection and injection, we call it a bijection. I hope you noticed that I defined injections and surjections by using elements of sets, which is standard. Graphically, a bijection looks simple. Every element has one and only one connection. So, if we flip the connections, we still get a bijection, which is an inverse of the initial one. Notice that we can start with a set A, apply F to its elements and thus go to B. Well, now we can apply inverted F to the elements of B and arrive back at A. It should not surprise you that these two functions cancel each other out, and their composition is an identity function which does nothing to the elements of A. We can also start with B, apply inverted F and then F itself, also yielding an identity. In this way, F and F inverted are each other's inverses when they are bijections. This brings us to a different way of defining functions. A function f is injective if and only if it has a left inverse. It is a surjection if and only if it has a right inverse. If and only if is a fancy way of saying equivalent. The new definition does not mention set elements directly. So functions are becoming a bit more central. To have a left inverse means that there exists a function g with this property. It is a left inverse because it is applied on the left. To prove injectivity, take two distinct elements from A. G composed with F is identity. Alpha is not equal to alpha prime by our choice. But alpha prime is the same as 
this. We see how G sends f of alpha and f of alpha prime to different elements, so they are also different by the basic function rule. I'm not going to prove the rest of it because it is easy and worth trying yourself. But what if I told you that there is yet another way of defining injections and surjections? It looks weird, but bear with me. A function is a monomorphism if for any set z and for any functions alpha and alpha prime going from z to a, equality of their right composition with f implies their equality. Take your time to grasp the definition. Notice how monomorphisms do not care about elements. And the main surprise of this video is a function is injective if and only if it is a monomorphism. So all three of these definitions define exactly the same thing, but they evolve from being element dependent to be solely about functions themselves. So now we are able to describe not what injection is, but how it interacts with other functions. You can learn more by doing exercises from the book which I am following, and I invite you to our Discord where we discuss it in detail.